Hey, Brian Maxwell checking in another episode of the car business in the raw. And what we're going to talk about today is a part of the sales process that's extremely important. And it gives a lot of people a lot of problems. And what that is, is how do you handle the trade objection? How do you get over the issues that rise up when a customer is unhappy with the offer that your dealership and you have proposed to them for their trade? So let's talk about it, okay? One of the things that I stress when I'm training salespeople at dealerships is this. The automotive industry is one of the slowest transitioning industries around. Let me explain to you why the trade gets so much pushback, okay? Please take this trip with me, mentally. Words have power, okay? If I asked you to close your eyes, if I, if I asked you to close your eyes and to picture uh, a sun kiss bottle, you know, the pop, sun kiss, by me saying the word sun kiss and asking you to paint a picture of it, mentally, you want to create what your perception of a sun kiss bottle is to you based off what the words that I spoke. Now, if I told you, hey, listen, I would like to trade my cell phone for yours. In order for you to be comfortable doing that, you're nine, ten, nine times out of ten going to be looking for a cell phone of equal, if not even greater, value. Now, let's flip it to inside the dealership. When a customer comes in, first mistake made by the dealership, is, by the sales associate, is when they ask, Brian Maxwell checking in gang wanted to make sure that you know about the limited time special offer that I have available for you right now for a limited time you get access to the how to dominate at the dealership sales training program complete with how to drive Facebook leads how to dominate YouTube the 100 success tips and the complete how to dominate at the dealership the audios the videos the downloadable PDFs everything is instantly available and is only one click away so all you have to do is click the link in the description or click the link in the comments, go on over, check it out and get started. I'm Brian Maxwell. I look forward to seeing you at the dealership. How much do you want for your trade? Why that's a, a silly question, or should I say, a question that's going to create obstacles and roadblocks for you, that's going to come back to bite you into you know what, is because of this. Most people's trades have sentimental value, which means that it has more of an emotional uh, connection to them, than what the actual physical value may be worth. And you may say, well, how does that happen? A number of reasons. It could be the first vehicle they bought for themselves, the first vehicle they bought when they got married to their significant other, the first vehicle they bought for themselves after the divorce. It could be the last uh, vehicle that was given to them prior to a loved one um, taking their journey and moving on to the next phase of life and existence. Their children could have been conceived in the vehicle. And it may be funny, but the shit happens in real life. Whatever it is, it might be a POS that you wouldn't piss on if it was on fire. But to this person, you know, they've got real life experiences in it. And so when they're asked, how much do you want for their trade? Their, their thought process, or should I say their response, will be based on not just the physical information. Matter of fact, hardly if any of it is going to be based off of hard facts of value, that emotional um, attachment is going to come through. So, you want to avoid asking them, how much do you want for your trade? And then, think about the analogy that I gave as far as with trading cell phones. I mean, now we're, thinking, we're talking about vehicles. So, when we tell a customer we're going to be accepting their trade, guess what? Subconsciously, they hear the word trade, they're looking for something of equal, if not greater value. And you and I both know, if you're at a dealership in sales, you've already started, you're not somebody that's waiting to start, then you know. The amount of money that is offered to an individual for their vehicle almost never is what that is what they wanted, or many times not even close. Why? Because the dealership has to get it certified, has to get it clean. If there's any repairs that have to be done, they have to do these things in order to turn a profit when they put it back out there on the lot or when they make it available for sale. So using the word trade, it paints a it creates a a mental. Uh, um, uh, electrical like circuit popping in the mind of the customer where they're looking for something equal or greater value. Never going to happen. Automatic letdown. Okay? So, let's really talk about what that trade situation is. Is it really a trade or is it a buy and sell situation? See, there's a thing called a pattern interrupt. And what a sales pattern interrupt is, is where you, you take a situation 
that is common and is routine typically when people go to buy this type of product or do business with this type of business or this particular industry. You know, it's just the way things typically go. And when you do something different or you deviate from it, it's called a pattern interrupt. And what a pattern interrupt does, it kind of discombobulates the customer for a minute and they say, whoa, what the hell's going on? We're supposed to be doing this, but now we're over here. And it helps you to get more of a realistic, um, you know, feel on where they're coming from and what concerns they may be having. So knowing that it's a buy and sell situation and it's not really a trade because we're not going to take their vehicle and just give them one. Because if it is a new vehicle of high value, guess what? Unless they pay cash for it, they have a negative balance on it. And so the odds of them being able to trade in something with your store that is so high in value that a dealership is willing to give them one of their vehicles, nine times out of ten, it's not going to happen. Okay? So as opposed to trade, guess what? It's a buy and sell situation. So as opposed to asking the customer, hey, how much you want for your trade? Do this. And my sales reps, nationwide, are using this and they have decreased, if not in a lot of situations, eliminated the whole back and forth uh, over the trade. So it's, hey, Mr. Customer, hey, that vehicle you drove in, um, that, 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 what type of vehicle is that? Um, it's a 2013 uh, cruise. Awesome. Let me ask you a question. Are you interested in selling that? Because we may be interested in buying it. Uh, I get people asking about vehicles like that all the time. Well, yeah, I may be interested in selling it. Awesome. Here's what I'm going to do. You and I are going to speak a little bit more, but I'm going to get your keys, give it to uh, one of the managers, let them go out and take a look at it. That way you'll at least know what we may be willing to buy it for. Now, think about what I did. Okay? I asked the customer, hey, that vehicle you drove in, what type is it? Never just assume because you looked at it, you automatically know what it is. Even if you do, you want them getting more comfortable speaking to you. So you guys say, hey, what type of vehicle is that? Now, let me ask. Would you, are you interested in selling it? Because we may be interested in buying it. I get people that ask about vehicles like yours all the time and then stop. And guess what? If they're in it, they'll say many times, if not just for informational purposes, say, well, yeah, I'm considering buying it. Awesome. Here's what I'm going to do. You and I are going to speak a little bit more, but I'm going to get your keys and give them to one of the managers and let them go out, take a look at it. That way we'll at least be able to tell you what we may be willing to buy it for. So I want you to notice something. Uh, it, you know, it's very straightforward, but we use words like may or could. Things that, you know, give some level of comfort, but also leave that window cracked a little bit or that door cracked a little bit just in case we need that, that wiggle room. And so guess what? Manager gets the keys while you're doing whatever. You may be showing them the other vehicle, you know, while they're getting their appraisal on. You know, you come back into the store following the process do your service tour and you sit them down. Okay? Now, once you get that information on what the dealership may be willing to buy it for, when you present that to them, you have to present it like, you know, you're just amazed at just how good it is. So when you're going back to speaking about it, hey, John, I got great news. My manager got back to me and, you know, the dealership would like to make you an offer on your vehicle. Okay? And what we're looking to offer you is seven thousand dollars for that and here's the good news about it we take that vehicle off your hands the remaining balance that you share with me you have we're going to take care of that for you too so congratulations because you'll also have another paid off vehicle on your credit so in the future when it's time for you and you to get something else you're considering something else guess what when you and i deal with each other it'll be even easier for you to be able to get this done because you got another part, uh, paid off vehicle on your credit so congrats again and then move on. How often have you been speaking to a vehicle, to a customer about a vehicle that they want to bring in, sell to the dealership, you give them a number, they're happy with it, or should I say satisfied with it, and we fail to take that moment to congratulate them and let them know how they'll have another paid off vehicle on their credit. Congratulations and make it that much easier. So with the trade, as opposed to saying trade, hey, it's a buy and sell. And as opposed to you getting them to tell you what they think is worth, Hey, get the manager to give the appraisal because it doesn't matter what they think is worth. They're only going to get what the store is willing to offer. When you present that option, congratulate them and let them know you guys move forward. They have another vehicle paid off and in the future it's going to be that much easier for you to help. All right? This and many other things that are help you streamline your process and go through the stratosphere. 